and good evening. It is May 25th. May 25th. Good grief. Next week will be June, won't it? Um, well, it's been an enjoyable year so far, and we're about the halfway point, so exciting things happen. Uh, let's see, by, at the end of this month, on the 31st, Dina and I celebrated an anniversary, and, um, and so uh, nine years we've been married. They've been um, it's gone quickly. It's interesting how time passes slowly but goes quickly. Um, I didn't make that up. I read that in a book somewhere. We're on a series talking about God's grace. And we're starting tonight with, and, and see, God's grace just has so many angles to it that I just wanted to take a little time and, and explore some of the angles that God's grace has to it. It's called multifaceted. Uh, which means it's uh, it's like a diamond that has all these different sides to it and, and glows and shines. And we're spelling out the word grace. And let me just by way of review that grace, number one, is God's gift to me. This is for your outlines if you're following along. Romans 3, 24, being justified as a gift by his grace through the redemption, which is in Christ Jesus. Now, we looked at that word gift and how it, how it literally means it's like a tip. It's a gratuity. It's something that above and beyond anything that we could ever hope for. You say, well, how do I, how do I say thank you for that? You just say thank you. There's, got, you, you, you. there's no rhyme nor reason to it. R, R is received by faith, Ephesians 2, 8 through 9. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift. It is the gift of God, and not as a result of his works, that no one should boast. So, that's Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 through 9. So, so it's God's gift. We receive that gift by faith. Now let's go about uh, let's go about tonight's lesson. And we're going to start with point three, G-R-A-A. -A. It's available to everyone. Look, you may have been brought up in the church. I was drug up in the church. You may you, this may be the first time you've ever come in and sat and listened. To, to the word of God being presented to you. I just want you to know, God doesn't play favorites. God doesn't have a teacher's pet. God doesn't single somebody out and say, I like you more than I like him, Romans 4, 16. Therefore, the promise comes by faith so that it may be by grace and may be guaranteed to all of Abraham's offspring. All right, who, who are all of Abraham's offspring? You and me. Anybody in the world is Abraham's offspring. We're all come from him. And God's wonderful gift of grace is available to anyone who will say yes to it. Mark chapter 16 and verse 16 says, whoever, I like that, whoever, whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. Whoever's all of us. There are no quotas in heaven. We have this many Americans and this many Canadians and this many Mexicans. No, no, there's no quotas in heaven. The gift of salvation belongs to us to accept it or to reject it. It's as simple as that. Number four, G-R-A-C, grace comes through Christ. John chapter one and verse 17. For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth come through Jesus Christ. Why? Why Jesus why not Buddha? Why not Muhammad? Why not somebody else? Why Jesus? Good question. And I'm going to answer it because Jesus paid the price of admission. Jesus paid for our salvation. Nobody else has done that one. Muhammad hasn't paid for salvation. Buddha hasn't paid for salvation. Jesus paid the ticket. Jesus got us in. Now, grace is free. But it ain't cheap by any stretch of the imagination. It cost Jesus his entire life. Your ticket to heaven cost Jesus everything he had. He paid the ticket. He paid the way in. The, law the Old Testament tells me what I did wrong. Grace, the New Testament, tells me how to get back on track. Romans chapter 5, verse 15. But the gift is not like the trespass. For if, men, for if the many died by the trespass of one man, how much more did God's grace and the gift that came by the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, overflow too many? Yeah, yeah, I love that. Now, in the Bible, one of the favorite terms for Christians is those who are in Christ. In Christ. It, you know, that we who are in Christ. It's used over 120 times in the New Testament alone. And it's always used, every single time it's used, 
to refer to somebody who has found salvation through God's grace. It's like this. Life's rough. Anybody that tells you that life isn't rough is lying to you. Life's rough. Life chews us up and spits us out on a regular basis, sometimes more than once a day. Life hassles us and it wrestles us and sometimes forget living. I'm just trying to exist in this environment that I'm in. And sometimes the hassles of life get to me and I do something I shouldn't do and I'm ashamed because I sin. And I carry with me, my body has a lot of scars on it. Scars from operations, scars from, from things that were taken off. Uh, my body's got a lot of scars in it. And, I, and that's like sin. Sin scars us. And we carry those sins around. And Jesus Christ takes that sin and covers me. In his grace, Galatians 3.27, for all of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves in Christ. Now, I'm going to tell you something. You may have scars from here all the way down to your toes, but you can put on clothes and nobody sees the scars. Everybody sees the threads. Everybody sees the, 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 the beautiful clothing that we have on. When we are in Christ, we're clothed with him. So when you're looking at me, you're not seeing me. You're seeing the clothes of Jesus Christ. You're not seeing the sin. I'm not seeing the lives that I've torn up and the people who've torn my life up. I just see Jesus Christ. Galatians 2.21. I do not set aside the grace of God. For if righteousness could be gained through doing good, through the law, then, then, then uh, where am I doing good? Then Christ died for nothing. Look, let me just say it this way. If you or I, if we could save ourselves based on our lives, then the cross is worth absolutely nothing to us. Yet the Bible tells us there's no other way to heaven without going through the cross. That we're either going to get into heaven through the cross of Christ and his grace, or we're not going to heaven. I can't play, say it any plainer than that. Uh, let me give you a way to, to remember uh, grace. G-R-A-C-E, God's riches at Christ's expense. You have to write that down somewhere. Number five, number five, E. God's grace is extended throughout eternity. Romans chapter six, verse 23. For the wages of sin is death. Oh, that's good. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord. If, you're, if you have this on the outline, circle eternal life, okay? I, I, I want you to circle that. Because the results of God's graciousness to us is going to go on and on throughout eternity. I mean, here's God. And God saved the absolute best for last. Because here we are with Jesus Christ. And it's just getting better and better and better and better. So what's heaven going to be like? Let me tell you what the Bible says heaven's going to be like. It says it's going to be four things. Number one is reunion. We'll be reunited with those loved ones who are also in Christ. See, th this is why I'm happy. I'm so happy that James Yasko is not just my son, but because he's a baptized believer, he is my brother. That means I'm going to get to see him in heaven. That just because Dina is my wife, that's fine while I'm on this earth. But because she's been baptized into Jesus Christ, she's my sister. And I get to see her in heaven. And so reunion. I'll get to see my father. I'm going to tell you something. For the first time since he passed away a year ago in March, I needed to talk to my father this past week to get some advice from him. And I couldn't. She's no longer on this earth. I'm sitting there thinking, who in the world am I going to get this advice from? Because I really need to talk to somebody like my dad. Who's going to do that? Isn't it the answer that came to was, David, you're old enough. Maybe you need to be taking your own advice. And, and, and so, and, and so re, reward. We'll be rewarded in heaven for the character that we developed by serving people here on earth. 
I can honestly say I have never claimed a reward. I, I would love for Crime Stoppers to come on and say, hey, if you can identify this person, then there's $5,000 in on it, in there for you. And, uh, and for, the, for the, the face to show up on the screen and me think, oh, I know that guy. I know who that person is, right? I, can, I don't even know. I could, I'll take the police to their house. Uh, and and I'll, I'll shake his hand and thank him for giving me $5,000. I have never won a reward. I, you know, I've never found anything. In heaven, there's going to be a reward. And the reward's going to be for the character that I've developed by serving other people here on earth. You know, heaven's interesting. It's not about all the medals you have on your chest. It's about all the scars you have on your body. Then reassignment. We have a reassignment. God's going to use you like he's never, like you've never been used before. He knows just exactly what we love to do, and that's what he's going to do. He's going to put us to work and doing exactly what we love to do because he's the one who created us, and he knows exactly what we need. I I, don't, I would not look forward to a heaven where all I did was just sit around because I don't like to just sit around. I like to be up and doing something. And so there'll be this reassigned, yeah, it, you know, so does that mean I'll be assigned to the nursery uh, through the eternity in heaven? And if you don't like the nursery, you're not going to be assigned to the nursery. You're going to be assigned to what you love to do and then and then release. Release. We're, all the pain, all the suffering... All the sadness, all the sorrow, all the grief, they're all done. They're gone. We don't have to deal with those things anymore. I wouldn't be a good preacher if I didn't say that there's a catch to everything I'm talking about tonight. Yeah, there's a catch. There's a catch to grace. <clears throat> and here's the catch. You have to accept it. We must accept it. The gift is here. You can either accept the gift right now or you're going to leave here today with the best gift in the world unopened. Let's say I uh, bought you a Christmas present in December. Wrapped it up in paper. You know, between you and me, it's a PlayStation 5. And I gave it to you because I know you want a PlayStation 5. And I keep waiting for you to sit down and tell me, let me tell you about this PlayStation 5 that you gave me for Christmas. It was absolutely amazing. It was wonderful. It was all those things uh, and that. And after about five or six months, I, I finally work around to you and say, but you know, after five or six months, I work around to you and I say, hey, what do you think about that Christmas present I got you? And what do you think I would do if you were to say, you know, I left it under the tree. I, I decided not to open it. God's gift of grace is here waiting for us. We can either open it or we can leave it unopened. And we can be unaccepted. And we can be unsaved. We can be lost. Because we wouldn't open up the gift of God's saving grace. Isaiah chapter 30 verse 18. The Lord longs to be gracious to you. When we're baptized into Christ, the Bible says we are now in Christ. So, if we're smart, we won't leave home without him. Well, open up the gift of grace. Let's pray. Our God in heaven, we come to you right now asking that you, Father, that you work in our lives. Father, there are folks that are watching this online that, that have never opened the gift of grace. They're sitting there right now and they're thinking, man, I don't know. I know what I need to do. I just know I need to do it. Father, I'm begging you to work in their lives so that they open up the gift of grace. One o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock in the morning, doesn't matter. When they're ready to open that gift, they can come down here and I will be ready to baptize them. Now, Father, we ask that you care for us and look after us. In Jesus' name, amen.